Hey guys, Metal Jesus here. Now, since 2016 and the release of the NES Classic, all the way up to today with the release of the TurboGrafx-16 Mini, there have been a lot of these mini consoles released over the last couple years. And as you can see here, I have most of them. So in this video, I thought I would walk through the things I like and dislike about each of them, and then I'm gonna rank them. Let's take a look. I'm gonna start with the mini console that I like the least, and that's gonna be no surprise to many of you, it is the Sony PlayStation Classic. When this was originally teased, I was pretty excited because I do like the original PlayStation, but as we got closer to the launch of it, it became painfully obvious that Sony was kinda of just phoning this one in. And the problem was obvious because while they're calling this the classic, it was a really weird mix of games. They had some really good ones like Final Fantasy VII and of course Metal Gear Solid, but where are all the other classics? You know, like the Tomb Raiders, the Wipeouts, the Crash Bandicoots. On top of that, they decided to include several PAL versions of games in here that ran at a lower frame rate. It was so weird. In this video, I'm not gonna get really deep into the modding scene that has since taken over and been really popular with these mini consoles, but just know that after this was released, a bunch of people released mods and solutions that you could easily put your own games on here. However, for this video and the ranking that I'm doing, I'm really pretty much just going off of the stock retail versions, although there is gonna be one notable exception here pretty soon. Overall, this is my least favorite mini console. Now I do think it looks pretty cool and it was awesome that Sony included two controllers. So that's pretty great. And some of the games they did include on here are pretty great and still fun to play today. But it needs to be said that this again is the PlayStation 1. These are early Polygon games. They look pretty rough on your big HD television. It would have been cool if Sony would have included some smoothing options, some ways of kind of artificially making some of these look a little better. Not a huge thing, but it would have been nice. Next up is the SNK Neo Geo Mini. And if you remember back when this first came out, I was pretty hard on it. I was, I was disappointed. So to start, let's talk about some of the positives here. I do really like how this looks. Out of all of the ones that I'm gonna show you today, this is the only one that actually has a built-in screen, which is pretty cool. However, for some reason, they didn't include the ability for you to use your own batteries and truly make it portable. Well, I guess it's portable, but you know what I mean? You're still gonna be stuck to having it plugged into the wall. It would have been cool if it allowed you to at least, you know, have your own rechargeable batteries or something like that. And SNK released five different versions of this mini console. So if you're a big fan of Neo Geo, there's a lot of cool things to collect here. Just be aware though, each one of those has a slightly different collection of games that are included on it. And you see from this Wikipedia article here that uh, yeah, it can get pretty crazy if you want them all. And then two other things I didn't really care about this is that while the games look great if you're playing on that built-in screen, if you output the HDMI to your television, well, it's blurry. It looks, it looks bad and it's very disappointing. And then original Neo Geos are known for their clicky thumbsticks. That's one of the things I really love about all of their previous systems. And for some reason, they decided to not do this with the mini console. Um, that's where that clicky thumbsticks are hard to make meme comes from. It's not a deal breaker because these games still play fine on it, but it's just, disappointing. And as far as the game collection goes, I do like the mix of classic Neo Geo fighting games, shooting games, and running guns in here. So there's a lot to choose from. There's a lot to like. <laughs> Moving on to the Commodore 64 Mini, or technically it's the C64 Mini. Now, I was very surprised to see this because this is a classic computer, but gamers like me that grew up in the 80s, well, it was really also kind of like a console because all I ever did is play games on this. And so it was really cool to see a you know brand new mini version of it. 
And seeing that it is a C64, well, of course it comes with 64 games built into it. And that's where, at least initially, this kind of got a little disappointing, at least when it launched. And honestly, that's one of the reasons why it's a little bit lower on this list, because they couldn't really license all of the classic games that came out on the Commodore 64. Honestly, it's nowhere near the amount of classics that most gamers like me probably would have chosen to put on here. Now, what's interesting is that the developers recognized this shortcoming and released a free BIOS upgrade that allows you to put your own games on it. That's pretty unique and very different than the other consoles that are included on this list because you don't have to hack it. However, there's two things that keep this mini console from greatness and being higher on this list. The first one being is that it's a computer and therefore it should have a keyboard. And many of these games assume that you would have a working keyboard. And because it's a mini and because of its size, they didn't include a working physical keyboard, which is kind of awkward in some games that want you to hit the space bar to start the game or maybe one of the function keys. So what they ended up doing to get around this is that on the controller, there's a button you can push to bring up a virtual keyboard that then allows you to go in and do what you need to do. And it works. It's just that it's really awkward. And speaking of the controller, when these first launched, the controller that was included in the box was prone to breaking. It was not the most sturdy controller that you could attach to this. And that was a real bummer. A lot of people complained about that. You can tell it's just not sturdy. But I will say, having the ability to load your own games onto this without having to hack it is pretty awesome. And they look and run great. And what's cool is that they've taken a lot of that feedback. And now since this has come out, they've released a new product where it's a larger full-size Commodore 64 with a working keyboard. So I'm not gonna talk about that much here because obviously we're covering the mini consoles, but it's something I'm gonna talk about in the future. Here is the NES Classic Mini, which is a system that really elevated how popular these things would go. When these first came out, they were almost impossible to buy. They were being scalped all over the place. People were freaking out just trying to get one. And what this did really well is just include 30 classic NES games that people still love and wanna play today. And, and this is where you know Nintendo has really the advantage over some of the other systems because these are stone cold classics and Nintendo is the first party developer for a lot of these. And so they were able to you know, pack on 30 games here that people were just dying to, to play. And in truth, there's not really that much to complain about the NES Mini. I mean, all of these games run and play great. I think really the only complaint at the time, and it's completely valid, is that the controller cord is just painfully short. I don't know what Nintendo was thinking when they released this, but yeah, it's way too short. But all of these games are still really fun to play even today, and so that's why it's as high on the list. Next up on my list is the Sega Genesis Mini, which includes 42 games. And like Nintendo, the Genesis benefits from a really strong collection of awesome first party and third party titles. And what you want from these consoles is a small, compact and ready to go list of awesome games. And again, I feel like that this just nailed it. It just knocked it out of the park. But what makes this even better is that they released the Tower of Power, which I find to just be awesome and hilarious at the same time. So you have the CD attachment that would go on the bottom of it. You have the 32X, you have the adapter for the cartridge. I mean, it's just hilarious. I'm trying to imagine the the sales meeting where they're like, yeah, you know, we, we're gonna do this, but we're gonna go all out. We're gonna release all the peripherals, the attachments for it. And you know, it's funny cause they don't work. They're just there for show, but they're there for the Uber fans who want the ultimate you know, Sega mini console. Probably the only thing that most people would say is not great about this is that the North American version of the console only has the three buttons, which is accurate to how it originally released, but is disappointing to some, you know, especially fans who want the six button controller with some games take advantage of. However, I believe Sega did sell an official six button controller for use in this. So I just don't happen to have one. But getting back to the games here, they're all really great. As a matter of fact, a couple months ago, we had a housewarming party 
And one of the televisions, I just had this set up and running and people would come up, grab a controller and play a couple rounds of their favorite games and it got used all night. People loved it. Next up is the TurboGrafx-16 Mini, which was a console that not a lot of people remember. It wasn't super popular in North America, although I had a roommate uh, in the 90s who had one and I always thought that they were very cool. And so you can pick up the TurboGrafx-16 Mini that you see here, or you can also get the PC Engine. That's what it's called in Japan, and you see it here. Much different form factor. And this has a big selection of 58 games, although I believe it is counting some of those double, depending on whether you're playing the TurboGrafx-16 version or the PC Engine version. But what's cool is that that selection of games does include the original TurboGrafx-16, obviously the PC Engine, the CD-ROM games, as well as the Super Graphics. So a lot to choose from here. And that's why on the main menu down on the corner, you can swap between either showing TurboGrafx-16 games or PC Engine. And the TurboGrafx-16 is mostly known for having a lot of shooters, which is not a problem for me. I love playing me some shooters, but there is other variety here too. So don't think you're just gonna get shooters. And one of the things that I love is that they kept those turbo switches on the controller, which are very handy for shooters because you don't have to just constantly hammer that fire button. You can use the turbo buttons to do it for you. And it's worth knowing that there are some hidden games included on this, which I thought was really cool. So for instance, if you select the game Salamander on the PC Engine side, and then with the controller, hit the select button twice, you'll hear a bell sound and that unlocks force gear. If you hit the select button three times, that will unlock Twin B. And then if you hold down the select button and press one to start the game, you'll get an updated version of Salamander. Pretty cool little bonus there. And I'm not even sure if that's all of the hidden games. They added some other nice little touches too. For instance, notice that when you select a game, it shows it inserting the hue card into the console. If it's a CD-ROM game, they've included the sound of a CD-ROM drive spinning up. And they even give you the option to play the game on a Turbo Express. That was the portable device. That's pretty hilarious. But really it's all about the games and that's why this mini console is so high on this list because there are just so many great games included on here. Many of them that I've been playing for the first time. Uh, it's definitely an awesome mini console. I'm really digging it. And finally, my favorite mini console to date has to be the Super NES Classic Edition. I guess I just feel like Nintendo really knocked it out of the park with this one. They took what they learned from the NES Classic and they applied it here. So this comes with 21 games and that includes a special release. So basically Star Fox was a game that was originally canceled, but they decided to release it in this exclusively, which was a really cool selling point. And thankfully this does come with longer controller cables, but honestly, I don't even use them because so many third-party companies made wireless solutions like you see here. So 8-Bit Doe makes these fantastic wireless controllers that work with it great. But really this is my favorite mini console for one simple reason, and that of course is the games. The Super Nintendo just had so many great games released for it, and most of them are included here. You've got Contra 3, Donkey Kong Country, Earthbound, F-Zero, Final Fantasy 6 slash 3. You've got Kirby, Zelda, Mega Man X, Secret of Mana, Super Castlevania 4, Super Metroid, etc., etc. It just goes on and on and on. I mean, these are all games that people still want to buy, own, collect, and play today. And again, having them all in this one small package, it's, it's perfect. It's, it's awesome. So those are my mini consoles ranked. I would love to know down in the comments what your rankings are, which ones you love. Do you have all of these as well? Uh, what consoles would you like to see made in the future? I know me personally, I would love to see a, a Commodore Amiga mini as well as a MS-DOS mini. I think that would be pretty amazing for them to do. Uh, who knows? So i uh, love to know what you guys think down in the comments below. As always, I wanna thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing and take care.